Let's talk about zero knowledge proofs, specifically in the context of blockchain technology, since that's what I teach on this channel. So if you're just joining me for the first time, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. Click the like button down below, click subscribe. And if you wanna become a blockchain developer, you should join my free training at my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about zero knowledge proofs. Um, so what are they? What kind of problems can they solve? So let's start with the problems, all right? Let's uh, look at Bitcoin. What's the problem with Bitcoin? Well, all the transaction information on Bitcoin is public. If I send Bitcoin from one account to another, uh, you can see exactly who sent that transaction. You can see when it was sent, and you can see uh, the amount of Bitcoin that was sent in the transaction, right? You can go to any Bitcoin Explorer and see that, okay? So there's a big benefit of Bitcoin, which is it's decentralized. There's no central intermediary uh, controlling that data. It's on the blockchain, but it's still public. You can still see all the information about it. So that's a problem that makes it, you know, not really usable in some applications, all right? So let's look at an alternative. Well, you could use a bank, right? And the bank could keep all your data private, right? If I want to send money to somebody with a bank transfer, write a check, use a debit card or anything like that, you know, all that transaction history, is, it's private, you know, it's not public. Somebody can't just like go on a website and see how much money I sent from my bank account, but it's centralized, right? All the data about those transactions uh, is kept in the bank. And that's another problem. So what if you wanted the best of both worlds? All right, well, that's where a cryptocurrency like Zcash comes into play. So Zcash gives you private transactions where you can send cryptocurrency without you know, all that information being public, right? And you don't need to store it on a central entity. You can still leverage blockchain technology so that you're not giving all this data away. So how does Zcash do it? Well, it uses zero knowledge proofs to achieve this. And specifically, it uses something called ZK SNARKs, uh, which stands for Succinct Non-Interactive Arguments of Knowledge, all right? So this is important because there's a few different types of zero knowledge proofs. There's interactive, non-interactive. And I'm not gonna get off into the weeds and all those details in this video, but I do wanna give you a high level explanation so that you can see how they work, okay? All right, so what is a zero knowledge proof? Well, essentially, it's a way of proving that you know some information without revealing the information itself. Or another way of saying this is proving that some data is correct without you know, revealing the data or how you, you know, came to that conclusion. So I wanna provide a really simple illustration of this, and I'm actually gonna borrow an illustration that I saw in another talk. So go check out this video if you haven't already. This is from the Web3 Summit uh, in 2018. Think about a zero knowledge proof like this, okay? Imagine a Where's Waldo image, right? Where you need to find you know, his exact location, and you ask someone else to do this, right? And they wanna to prove to you that they have found Waldo without revealing his exact location or how they arrived at that conclusion. All right, so how would they do this? Well, let's uh, kind of draw this out a little more. All right, so say you have a business, right? And your business needs to, uh, it has a bunch of Where's Waldo images, so like thousands and thousands. And they need to find where Waldo is in every single picture, okay? So I'm gonna put this here, you know, needs to find Waldo. And let's say you have another business or a consultant or something like that, and they are really good at finding Waldo in those pictures. Maybe they have an algorithm that does this. So uh, Waldo Finder. All right, and these two businesses wanna work with each other, right? But this person doesn't wanna work for free. They don't wanna give them all the answers uh, and then risk not getting paid or something like that, okay? So this person essentially uh, you know, asks uh, this company that has an algorithm for finding Waldo to prove that they have found Waldo in every single instance, and they can submit the proof and if they can do it, then they will, um, you know, get paid. So how can this person prove that he's found Waldo in the image and all the images uh, without revealing the location and how he got there? Well, essentially the Waldo finder can ask this person to turn around and he can take a cardboard cutout with uh, a space just big enough for Waldo and put it over Waldo to show him without revealing the exact location uh, or how he got there, right? And then he asks this person to turn around. They see the proof that Waldo's there and they don't know any other information outside the fact that he found them, right? So you can do this algorithmically, you can do this with computers, and that's how a zero knowledge proof would work. Prove that you found Walter the image, but you don't know uh, where he is or how you got that information. All right, so in this case, uh, these two people would be a prover and a verifier, right? So this person would be a verifier, and this person would be a prover. And these are two important roles in a zero knowledge proof, right? 
So this person verified that Waldo was found, and this person proved uh, that he found Waldo. Okay. So if you go back to the Wikipedia definition of zero-knowledge proofs, uh, basically it's a, a method by which one party, the prover, can prove to the other party, the verifier, uh, that they know the value of X without conveying any information apart from the fact that they know X. Right? You know, not, not how you found X uh, or any other information, but you just know that it's there. So why are zero-knowledge proofs important? Well, there's a huge push uh, to revolutionize privacy on the web. That's one of the big driving forces behind sort the web 3.0. So going back to the bank example, right, you can keep your transaction history private, but then they own all your data. And this is true for a lot of big apps, right? That's one of the big incentives that they have free platforms in the first place is they can take your data and do stuff with it, sell it, all kinds of stuff, right? So there's a big push to try to, you know, innovate with privacy technology where you can uh, retain more ownership of your own data without having to give it to a centralized entity like this uh, and still be able to do stuff with it, right? So what if we can use zero knowledge proofs to, you know, achieve some of this stuff? And what if we can use blockchain technology uh, to decentralize data where you can retain more ownership over it. It stays private. So you can prove things to apps without them having to know the information itself. So what would be an example? Well, identity would be a really good example. So what if you could retain full ownership of your own identity, your history, and all that kind of stuff, and then apps could simply, you know, just verify that you are you without exactly having to know who you are, right? So that'd be a good example of zero knowledge proofs for identity, how we could, uh, you know, implement better privacy on the web. And what if we can use more advanced blockchains that support smart contracts to build programs that do this, all right? So we already are, and I'll give you some examples, all right? So uh, one is like the concept of a mixer. So what is that? Well, remember I talked about Zcash has private transactions and Bitcoin doesn't, right? So there's another problem with Ethereum, for example. Uh, Ethereum doesn't have private transactions natively, right? So uh, if I have an Ethereum account and I interact with a smart contract or I send Ethereum cryptocurrency from one person to another, all that transaction history is public tied to the account that I use, right? So a mixer allows you to um, achieve privacy with zero knowledge proofs uh, with this specific implementation here that I have on screen, which is Tornado Cash, all right? So I'll explain how it works. Essentially, uh, instead of sending cryptocurrency from you know one account directly to another, like on Ethereum, so you instead send it to a mixer like this. Okay. All right. Then there's other people who are also sending currency to this mixer, and the more people that send it, uh, the greater anonymity it has. And in fact, this is called an anonymity set. Okay. So instead of sending it from you know directly here. Uh, the recipient can withdraw it from the mixer with a proof, right? And this is a zero knowledge proof that doesn't know anything about the person uh, who sent it, which means that the transaction is effectively private. And like I said earlier, uh, assuming there's enough people in an anonymity set and enough time has passed after the deposits, right? And I'll also caution you to use something like this at your own risk. This is not financial advice. You should always use other privacy measures like VPNs when you're using mixer technology. So that's a way that we can improve current blockchain implementations to have privacy, right? So this area is ripe for innovation where we can build more apps that allow users to retain uh, ownership of their own data and also achieve privacy in their online activity, all right? So, you know, we're trying to figure this out. There's always growing pains with trying to innovate with technology like this. Uh, there's some downsides to it. Like sometimes the proofs are, you know, computationally very expensive to uh, basically perform on ordinary everyday devices. And they're not always airtight, right? There's actually some chances that they can fail. Uh, but sometimes they're so small that it doesn't matter, right? All right, so I hope you all like this video. Subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below. And if you wanna become a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.